Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video we have the remnants of Beryl and what it can mean for the rest of the hurricane season. How bad could it get? If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTippets.com for Tuesday, July 9th, 2024. The black arrows pointing towards the remnants of Hurricane Barrel, moving up its way up the Mississippi River Valley into the Midwest of the United States. And then we have four tropical waves that we are monitoring through the Atlantic Basin, but none are expected to develop anytime soon. Here's their vorticity signatures. As you can see, none of them are as strong as what Barrel was or still is, even with its remnants. So we're not expecting any development over the next seven days, according to the National Hurricane Center. But Barrel did leave its mark. And yesterday, when it was making landfall with Texas, there was over 100 tornado warnings in effect from this landfalling hurricane. And out of that, we saw 16 confirmed tornadoes. Now, in terms of how intense this hurricane season has been so far, just from Barrel alone, you can see that we have a total of 35.1 ACE units just from Barrel alone, which is the earliest we've ever seen in the Atlantic Basin since we've been recording uh, hurricane records uh, by humans themselves. As you can see, Alberto and Chris barely made a, nut, uh, a dent in that ACE energy index, but uh, Barrel alone has already surpassed all other storms and this is just a list of other records that barrel crushed in its lifetime uh, since we were tracking it for the last few days now as in terms of how bad barrel has been and the records it's broken could have been a lot worse as you can see here yes we've had three named storms so far in the 2024 hurricane season but we could have had a lot more uh, if the conditions were much more favorable we had Invest 90, 91, 92, 93, 95, 94, and then 96. With only, a, and then out of those, the rest of them, only three became named storms Alberto, Barrel, and Chris. And this is still the early part of the hurricane season. As you can see by our black hour here, based on the average number of storms, we are still on the very low rung of actual activity. If this was the beginning of, or middle of August, that'd be one thing, but we are only at the, st the very beginning of the season, and we still have the peak of hurricane season to go, the middle of October, September, and October. And if we look at other, two of the most active seasons in recent memory, 2005 and 2020, Yes, we are only three named storms in, with Barrel being a record-breaking storm so far. Uh, but you can see how in 2020, at this same time, we had five named storms all the way up to Edward. And in 2005, uh, at the same time, we had up to Cindy, with the beginnings of Dennis in a, forming in a few days' uh, time uh, relative to where we are today. But you can see that we're pretty much where these two seasons were in terms of name storms and intensity that we're talking about. Barrel broke both those records. It was the earliest Category 4 hurricane and Category 5 hurricane on record in the Atlantic Basin, which was broken by in 2005 from Dennis and Emily, as you can see on the top left of your screen. So in terms of where this could go, if we look at the tracks from 2005 and 2020 where we had record number of storms those years we are pretty much we could potentially see a repeat of those two seasons and why so well let's look at their sea surface temperature anomalies as you can see the atlantic in 2005 this time uh at on the same date we had a neutral enzo coming out of an El Nino event in 2005 where our black box is, but the Atlantic was relatively warm. 2020, we had a more robust neutral Enzo heading towards La Nina, 
and the Atlantic again was above normal. So where we see it today, we're in a, a neutral Enzo heading towards a La Nina potentially, and the Atlantic is even warmer than it was back in those two years. So potentially we have more fuel on the fire. It's just a matter of the atmosphere linking with the sea surface temperatures to make it erupt into a potential catastrophic season. In terms of the La Nina, you can see we are in that neutral Enzo territory. We're at negative uh, 0 0.08 degrees Celsius right now. And that's only going to continue to go down as we're going to have some strong trade winds to continue the upwelling in the eastern Pacific Basin based on the European model over the next month or so. And that's showing in the forecast where we're going to have either neutral Enzo conditions or La Nina conditions by the time we get to the peak of hurricane season, as you can see with that black arrow. So because of all these things that I just showed you, it's not just me looking at it, it's also Colorado State University, and they've already increased their forecast for the number of storms that are being forecasted for the 2024 hurricane season, and they're basing it off these analog years, 1888, 1926, 1933, the biggest ace-producing season ever, 1995, 2005, a record year, 2010, and then 2020, the most number of named storms on record as well. So they've increased their forecast now to 25 named storms, 12 hurricanes, and six major hurricanes. As you can see on the right, how that compares to the average. And this forecast includes Alberto, Barrel, and Chris already. <coughs> so as you can see here, compared to our predictions, they're pretty much on the same mark. Uh, we were predicting back at the end of May, 25 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and, and five major hurricanes. So, and we've had three named storms so far. We had one hurricane and one major hurricane in the form of barrel. So this is pretty much where we're gonna be potentially at by the end of this season. Will this need to be increased? We'll see as we go through the remainder of the season uh, if this needs to be adjusted once more. So we've already seen Alberto, Bell, and Chris. Next name on the list would be Debbie. And if we were to exhaust this list based on our forecast, we would go into the auxiliary list, which has Adria, Braylon, Caridad, and Deshaun as well being used potentially. Now over the next seven days, as you saw with the National Hurricane Center forecast, we're not expecting much development. You can see that on the models and the on the ensemble here. It looks pretty quiet. And if we look for the rest of the month of July, right now we're expected to be quiet as well. And we'll go into more detail about that tomorrow in a video. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on deciphering weather. So if you like what we're doing here, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you do would like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.